Hello, this is Ron from HVAC Training Solutions. If you are watching this video, you have probably been searching Toledo high and low looking for some type of HVAC certification course or HVAC school. Well, I'm going to help you sort things out and hopefully you'll consider our training by the end of this video. And to reward you for watching this video, we'll have a short HVAC training session waiting for you at the other side. So you've probably been trying to figure out if HVAC is right for you, which school is right for you, can you keep your job, how much does it cost to attend air conditioning school? Well, I can't tell you all of that right now, but I can tell you about the HVAC industry and it is a great career field. The jobs are growing 21% faster than the national average and I believe it's even higher than that because as the older HVAC technicians are retiring and leaving the trade, they're leaving at a much greater rate than the new technicians are entering the HVAC trade. The average salary is $45,000 a year. I know technicians that make sixty dollars to $65,000 a year, but they are not your average technician. They are students of their trade. They study all of the time. They have about three to five years experience and they are highly trained and highly skilled individuals. For those type of HVAC techs, there's always jobs available anywhere in the United States. And you have to be just about every tradesman you can imagine, a welder, electrician, a troubleshooter, an electronics technician, plumber, salesman, and counselor. And then when you when I'm talking about a counselor, you have to to help those customers of you yours that have ailing parents or young babies that have been all night without heating or cooling, and they're quite distraught when you show up. So is the HVAC career field and and our online training right for you? Only you can decide that. I can tell you that if you decide to train with us, you you need to be focused. You need to be motivated. You need to want to learn and be a top-notch technician then our training is right for you if you're looking for a quick certificate so you can go out there and try and get a job and earn a good salary without putting in the time you need to learn then our training is not right for you either way if you have any questions want to learn more about our training all you have to do is call me 904-742-9511 and now all you have to do is stand by for a short hvac training video So the first thing you'll have to do is install the fan control. Here it is right here. It does have a pre pressure sensing connection that you're going to connect to the high side of the system. You'll have to find a port to connect it to and many times you'll, there'll be more than one pre high side pressure port on the condenser that you can connect it to. If not, you're going to have to install one and that makes it just a little bit more difficult. So once you get the the uh, pressure port installed you're going to locate the L1 terminal to the condenser fan and break that wiring and you're wired into the pressure switch controls. Alright so the next thing you want to look at is the uh, pressure settings. There'll be screws on the uh, top of this unit that'll adjust these pointers to the point that you want. Now let's take a look at the differential. This is the difference in pressure between cut in and the cut out pressure. You want to keep that between 30 and 50 PSIG. If you set it um, if you set it below 30 what's going to end up happening is the fan is going to cycle on and off quite rap rapidly and you're going to burn out your condenser fan. If you set it for above 50 there's it's too long of a period for the fan to be off and that causes wide swings in the head pressure and those wider swings in the head pressure th that can also cause metering problems so you want to keep that differential pressure between 30 and 50 the initial setting before you, you dial it in you should put it at 40 and that's a good place to start let's take a look at the settings that we have right here so 
let's call this 210 at this point. So at 210 PSIG, this switch, pressure switch will close and anything above 210 is going to run the condenser fan motor. So 210 and above, switch closes, condenser fan comes on. Then there is a differential of 50. So if you take 210 and you subtract the differential of 50, that's 160 PSIG. So at, and this is where the fan cuts out. So at 160 PSIG and below, it this switch breaks and the condenser fan shuts off. So let's take a look at how that works. So the conden it's warm during the day, condenser fan's running, uh, the pressure is above 210 PSIG and it's humming along without an issue. It's, it uh, gets into the evening, the amb ambient temperature falls below 60 degrees and the head pressure starts to drop from 210 to 200 to 180 and on its way down when it gets to 160, which is the difference between the high event and the differential, 160 PSIG, this switch breaks, shuts the condenser fan off. Because the condenser fan is off, the head pressure begins to rise and it goes back up from 160, 170, 180, up to 210. The switch comes on and it maintains that head pressure. So the head pressure is going to stay between 160 and 210 in this example. So when you first install this uh, fan control, you're going to really want to set this uh, differential to to 40s because that gives you uh, that gives you the midpoint on the differential, and you do not want the saturation temperature or the temperature of the refrigerant and the condenser to fall below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So with an R22 system, that's 168. PSIG, this is your low, low point. So remember your low point is the differential minus the high event. So with the differential set at 40 PSIG, you take 168 plus 40, that is 228 PSIG, and that's where you want to set your high event. And that's going to be your starting point. And then you'll hook your gauges up to the system and run it during a low ambient conditions and watch the pressures and temperatures and the fan cycling and the fan cutting off. You may have to adjust the differential a little bit and the high event just a bit, but this is a very good starting point and you shouldn't have to make too many adjustments to get it dialed in and get it right. Pretty simple system, easy to install, um, easy to set up if you understand the high event and differentials and we will move now move on to the um, condenser flooding. All right, see you in the next video.